welcome everyone okay to this uh, presentation of the third year SS student grant challenge uh, my name is adriano camps i am a professor at the technical university of catalonia in barcelona spain and i will be coordinating this uh, grand challenge uh, you may recall that when i was the GRSS president in 2017 and 18 the first and two grand challenges were uh, issued and i think that uh, was very well received by uh, the students I will not say only the student members, okay? Because at that time and at this time also, we do not force anyone to be even a member. But if you want to participate, you must become a member and form a chapter uh, before the end of the year. And actually, that triggered uh, an increase in the number of student members and also on the number of chapters, student chapters. Okay, so I think, and I think GRS leadership has considered that this is a good initiative to continue. And here we are. Just to give you a little bit of background, uh, this uh, presentation is going to be organized as a quick review of the first and second student uh, GRSS student grant challenges. And then we'll spend most of the time with the third student grant challenge, the theme. I know some of the people here, like my colleague Hyo Park, he's not a student. Okay, actually he's a professor and he wants to learn about this and he was curious about the theme. Uh, then I will go through the application and the selection process, the summary of the proposal that you should be writing, a short one, but uh, a proposal, the important dates, and then to give you an idea, some potential techniques, okay, that uh, can be used using uh, remote sensing to address this problem, and then we will conclude with the Q&A. So the first GRSS student grant challenge was about the design and implementation of an end-to-end -end observing system based on drones or RPAS to address a problem link linked to the strategic themes like the observation of the polar regions, precision, precision farming, forest monitoring, the certification, etc. Actually, the topic was open, but it should include from the definition of the problem, okay, the techniques that will be used to address this problem the instrument concept, the data storage transmission, and the application to display, display uh, the results in a, interactively. There was a dedicated session in uh, IGARS 2019 in Yokohama. Here is the reference, okay? And the winners, if I remember correctly, David may correct me, I think we received something like 14 or 15 proposals and we down select uh, five of them. Here you have the titles of the works conducted and presented by the five selected teams, okay? And some snapshots of the work that they did. So uh, in one of the cases, it was about uh, fire detection using drones. The other one was about precision agriculture and forest, okay, in the Brazilian uh, savanna. The other ones about, about um, this one grew as a really, really complex drone, even though it uh, stopped at test phase, but it includes even a synthetic radar, if I remember correctly, or an ultra wideband uh, radar that was for detection of survival people after some uh, uh, catastrophes or disasters. This one was from um, India, and it was about monitoring glaciers in the Himalayas that are melting. And this one was from Australia about uh, getting multiple looks images of right fields in order to get 3D images and see how it grows. So you see uh, the, the applications were all based on drones, most of them using optical sensors, but really, really interesting uh, things conducted by teams from Brazil, India, uh, Japan, China, and uh, Australia. So everywhere, almost everywhere around the world, the world, except curiously, no one from Europe, the US or Africa. But anyway, that was the purpose, eh? to give a chance uh, for these uh, people to, to make it. And actually the feedback that we got at the end of the session in IGARS 2019 was really, really positive. The second year says a student grant challenge was a bit higher higher in the challenge, in the technical challenge, and also on the height of the observing platform. If the first one was about drones, this one is about CubeSats, 
Okay, CubeSats are small satellites. The smallest size is about a cube of a 10 centimeter side. And uh, three teams, well, the selection process. The selection process here uh, was uh, conducted in a different way. It was somehow externalized. So we got a person from NASA, ESTO office, a person from ESA in charge of all these uh, new space activities, and a person from NSSTC, the National Space Science and Technology Center in uh, United Arab Emirates. <clears throat> they evaluate. I think we received something like uh, six or seven or eight, I can't remember exactly, proposals. And uh, originally only two were going to be selected, but actually it turned that uh, a third one was only software. Okay, so it could piggyback on uh, one of the two that were um, awarded. There was uh, one team from uh, my home university. I had nothing to do with it. It was supervised by Professor Juan Ramos. And uh, I will explain in the next slide what is it about, but it includes an L1 radio meter, a multispectral camera, and a software defined radio for uh, RFI monitoring. The second team, not in order of selection, I mean, all were random, but this is how they were placed in the, in the website, was Telcom University from Indonesia, supervised by Professor uh, Edward, uh, proposed a multispectral camera with a miniature spectrometer for atmospheric sensing. And picking back on the uh, camera from the Telcom University team, uh, the Kyushu Institute of Technology in Japan, okay, uh, are developing an onboard processing algorithm for uh, cloud detection and classify those images that deserve to be downloaded uh, to Earth or not. Here you have a 3D model, okay, of uh, how the, this is the final version of the, uh, spacecraft, how it will look like. It is a three unit uh, satellite. So this is 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, and this is about 30 centimeters. And here you have the payload uh, from the UPC team. In this here, we will see it again, is the payload uh, from uh, Lokana team in Indonesia and the software that is running on it is the one um, from Japan, from Kyushu uh, Institute of Technology. Okay, so all the procurement for all the components uh, is on their way, and even the launch is expected with the uh, EXO launch uh, for Q2 2022. So all the teams have to deliver their payloads by the end of this year, and actually, in order to shorten the, the, the time, the integration process. Okay, or the testing, I would say, uh, will be done remotely. Okay, all the interfaces with the platform and the different payloads. So when they arrive, they will be uh, ready to be integrated. So I think this is really, really challenging, but it's also very demanding. Eh? Uh, it is taking longer than usual. Also, the funding was uh, larger because I mean it's not cheap, but I think it is the first uh, cubes that developed within the framework of IEEE. Okay, and it's not just a pure exercise, okay, because it will be launched. And we have to be very, very thankful to uh, NSSTC, uh, the Technology Center, Science and Technology Center from the United Arab Emirates uh, Space Agency for um, working with GRSS to make this uh, happening. And the third GRSS Student Grant Challenge. This year's challenge is a bit uh, different in the sense that uh, we have team up with the Van Allen Foundation. The Van Allen Foundation is a partnership foundation between the University of Montpellier, okay, and the Montpellier University Space uh, Center. And what this uh, foundation does, it basically looks for sponsors uh, that can provide uh, money in order to conduct projects, okay, for this uh, Montpellier University Space uh, Center. So one of the worries uh, or the problems that they wanted to, to address was the problem of marine pollution and litter. So they, because I'm part of the, the, the scientific advisory board of that um, foundation, I said, wow, we can make a lot more if we join forces, okay, between GRSS and the third student grant challenge and them, and maybe we can combine uh, both. Okay, so we came up with this. The title is Novel Methods and Techniques to Detect and Track Marine Pollution and Litter. You will notice a subtle 
difference between the call that was issued, the first call, and this one. In the first call, it was open also to teams of, uh, let's say, senior researchers. Uh, but the target should be on the northwestern part of the Mediterranean, the part that goes from the south of France until the Balearic Islands. Okay, that as you will see in one of the next slides, it's an area that is, uh, has one of the highest uh, levels of uh, plastics uh, per cubic meter. In this challenge, because GRSS has a global um, uh, participation, all the members are from everywhere in the world, we do not restrict to the Western Mediterranean, but we open to the problem of marine pollution everywhere in the world. So, the, the problem, okay, so the topic will be about the detection and tracking of marine pollution and litter worldwide, as I uh, mentioned, and it can be based using different techniques. For example, you can use uh, spectral signatures in the optical uh, part of the spectrum, in the sphere, the short wave infrared, in the thermal infrared, also radar, or even using radar polarim polarimetry. You can use uh, existing data sets and just apply artificial intelligence uh, on them, trying to uh, train them and try to make the, the estimation where the uh, plastic litter is going to be. You can use in situ data, or you can uh, make a combination of data sets uh, from satellites, from buoys, or whatever. So it's absolutely open. Okay. The problem is a very, very challenging one. As I will comment, ESA has already issued, uh, has, is sponsoring now 26 projects okay, to tackle this from different aspects. And uh, what we know from now is that there is not a single uh, solution that um, that is the best and that solves the problem. Really. So it's very, very problematic, this detection. And um, we believe that the space techniques can provide a significant contribution, okay, to increase the current capabilities to detect plastic in the oceans, okay? Especially in what refers to the spatiotemporal covering that uh, satellites can uh, provide. So again, the idea is to combine or, I mean, but this is totally open for the teams to propose. You can combine in situ data from boats, from marine or aerial drones. When I say marine drones, it's kind of submarine, okay? Some people, they are, people are more familiar with the air uh, drones, okay? The aerial drones, but not with the, those. Those other drones are like submarines, okay? That go under the water, mm, often not too deep, but sometimes yes, okay? And they perform measurements and they can stay for months uh, under the water. It can also be about modeling. I will comment a little bit later about that because you can bring in, and actually if you bring in uh, ocean circulation models that provides an added value because where all the plastics are going to get concentrated, basically where the currents push them, okay? So in the end, they take to concentrate in the vortex, in the oceans, okay? In some regions where all the garbage tends to, to get concentrated. So you can use um, any type of observation, preferably uh, free and open data, such as the one from the Copernicus system from the European Union, but there are others, uh, free data from NASA and other uh, agencies. Or uh, you can, integrate or augment uh, um, the uh, AEIs, uh, which is a system, automatic identification system that is used for uh, ship tracking. And actually there are proposals that plan to use uh, sensors, okay, on board buoys that will be equipped with AEIs, AIS, sorry, um, um, systems, okay, so that these buoys can be tracked. So, I mean, they are actually, the, the problem is totally open and this is one of the messages that I want to, to emphasize. Don't uh, try to think out of the box. In the slides that I will be presenting at the end, you will see many, many solutions that people are already studying. But again, none of them is solving the problem, okay? But probably the combination of some of them will uh, improve significantly the performance, okay? 
So um, one of the ideas, okay, is that for the step two, okay, some of the projects, if they are found of interest for the Van Allen Foundation, okay, they would be uh, keen to sponsor the development of a payload, okay, that can be bored in one of the future nanosatellites that they will be developing. Okay, that's why the emphasis is on space technologies, but again, is not limited to space um, satellites acquiring data. It can also be satellites collecting data from buoys or uh, whatever combination you can think about. So regarding the application and selection process, you need to write a preliminary two-page form, okay, which is the same one, the very same one, as it was in the first round of the call, the call that was uh, open also to uh, senior scientists, okay? If there is any clarification needed, please feel free to contact us. Um, it's really, well, simple and complex. Okay, and complex because you will have to condensate what you have to say in two pages. So sometimes it's easier to write 10 pages, okay, uh, full of, blah, 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 and garbage, but now you have to go straight to the point, okay? It will be evaluated by the scientific committee of the Van Allen Foundation and GRSS, okay? And with that, uh, we will select which teams uh, will be selected. We are targeting to about five teams, no, five or four teams, sorry. Um, at the founding level, I think it was about uh, five or six K, something like that. Okay, David Kank is here and he can provide the, the final numbers. But this is basically what you should be uh, targeting. Of course, you can complement this, okay, with uh, research funds uh, from your, um, the professor that will be basically uh, mentoring you during this, uh, this project, okay? What is important is that if you are not members, you become as soon as possible. And if you are already GRS as a student members, you form a chapter, okay, in order to receive the funding from IEEE GRSS, okay? You can go to the important dates, okay? It's actually in the next slide for your convenience and more details on how to form a chapter can be found in this website. But the, the, the thing, the, the timeline is in the, in the following slide. So what should be in the proposal? You need to define which is the background and the objectives, okay? Of course, the theme is the marine pollution and litter, okay? But which specific objectives are you going to, to address? For example, if you are doing um, oceanography, physical oceanography, and you are going to study the currents, are you going to say, okay, I'm going to make a model, a more detailed model of my region, because this way I will get a better idea on where the litter is going to get concentrated. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'm going to deploy a buoy because I will put this or that other sensor and I will transmit the data because the buoy will not be too far away from the, the coast using, okay, uh, that uh, mechanism. For example, LoRa. Or I will be communicating with a, a communication satellite. That's also a possibility. Or I will just be using uh, hyperspectral or multispectral imagery. That's another, okay. which the background, okay, the objectives, how are you going to tackle this, okay, and provide a more detailed implementation of your solution, okay, in uh, part number two. Regarding the work program, okay, you need to basically demonstrate that you have the, the a clear idea, okay, on how you are going to split your project into different subtasks and which is the connection between them. Okay, and if you are going to need uh, other data, where are you going to get it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And as it is, I mean, it's like the the work package descri description and the Gantt uh, diagram. Okay, uh, which also will be reinforced in the planning. Okay, with the scale schedule and the milestones. You need to provide also an idea of uh, the people that will be involved and how the project will be managed. Okay, if you can provide some background, okay, to, to show the feasibility, that's okay. Okay, it, it, it will also make your, your proposal stronger. Uh, 
<clears throat> regarding point number six, deliverables, okay, which are going to be the outcomes of your study? Okay, are you going to develop a new sensor, maybe with an Arduino, or are you going to just uh, make a, a software package in, I don't know, whatever language, okay, to process some satellite images? Uh, let us know which is going to be the final deliverable. Okay, the finance, which is your budget, please try to use uh, free and open uh, uh, satellite imagery if you are using that or uh, software processing packages. There are many that are free. Don't ask for expensive uh, software packages that you have to pay for them. Okay, and any, <clears throat> excuse me, partnerships, okay, that you may have or you may work uh, in that direction. The dates are the following. The first one is in three weeks from now. Okay, it's on June 30. Okay, this is the deadline for submissions. Okay, I know it's not that much, but it's only three pages. I, sorry, two pages, what you have to write. Okay, so if you find the, the time, okay, uh, think about it with your mates. And I think it is, uh, it is doable. Why we are setting this deadline on June 30? Because we want to be able to announce uh, during IGARS, hopefully in the plenary, okay, who are the winners, okay? And that will also give visibility to you and to the whole uh, third year as a student grant challenge. <clears throat> the idea is that also after that, uh, after one month and a half later, okay, uh, by September 1st, uh, you can start or you have do the paperwork to start the, fun, the, the formation of the IEEE GRSS student chapter. Okay, so you need uh, to, to get some coordination. I know that in many countries, August is everything is totally closed and it will be very difficult to meet your mates, etc. Try to do your best in July. If you need a little bit more time, uh, we can be a little bit more flexible. Okay, but uh, well, you have to, to be proactive, okay, to create your chapter. Um, by October 1st, okay, we will initiate the transfer of the funds. Uh, sometimes it's not easy because they usually go through the section, but uh, I mean, it, it has worked for the first uh, two other challenges, so it should be doable this time as well. Okay, and the idea is that by November 1st, or for sure before the end of the, uh, of the year, uh, all the funds are transferred to the student chapters, okay? And you can do your work. Anything that you have to, that you need to purchase, you can pay for them from it. It is important that you think that uh, basically your project will last uh, one, one year and a half. And uh, the selected teams will have to make a dedicated uh, presentation in a dedicated specific session at IGAS 2023. And now <clears throat> a few slides, okay, to give you an idea of the magnitude of the tragedy, okay, and the potential solutions that people are studying. So uh, what you have in this, uh, in this slide are two plots, one with the concentrations of uh, plastic. So you, what you have here is grams, okay, per square kilometer. Okay, so we are not talking about these places where you see bottles and uh, bags, etc. Okay, because this is grams per square kilometer. Okay, so the density, okay, it looks like a small, but in some regions, okay, can be really, really visible. Okay, you have here an area between uh, Hawaii and um, the west coast of the US, which is one of the regions where most of the plastic garbage tends to, to concentrate. There are other regions that are marked here, okay? And in particular in the Mediterranean because it's a closed sea. So it only has two openings to the ocean here in the Gibraltar Strait and in the Suez uh, Channel, okay? And actually if you zoom in, you will realize that in this area, which was the one that was targeted by the uh, original call, uh, from the Van Allen Foundation, it's one of the regions with uh, the highest concentration of uh, plastics. If you think, <clears throat> excuse me, about the um, how many, which is the, um, the size of the plastics that we are dealing with. 
Actually, here you have the, the size, and here is the, the concentration. Okay, so it's items per uh, millimeter, and this is uh, the length. Okay, so most of them are one millimeter or less. You have some that are a little bit bigger. Of course, you have some that are much bigger, but they are also much less frequent. Okay, but the problem are these plastics over here, which are what we call the microplastics. Microplastics, even though not really micro, many are those that are less than five millimeters uh, in dimension. Okay, so the challenge, how would you use space technology to monitor plastic marine litter? Okay, as I said before, this is the map of plastic concentrations. You may see, okay, we already have a map, what for? Well, this map has lots of unknowns, okay? Don't believe this is the truth because the truth is the truth until someone comes with a more powerful or more data or a, a, you know something that basically uh, defeats this, okay? And, and improves uh, what is known uh, at the time. Uh, it depends also on the uh, circulation of the of the water bodies, okay, in the in the oceans, and of course uh, all these are the things that you can think about when trying to find a solution for this problem. Just to give you an idea, okay, because you may be working in different areas, some people are using uh, deep learning methods, okay, to train networks uh, using. Uh, multi-spectral data, in this particular case is from Sentinel-2. So these slides will be available for you at the end. So don't worry, you can, or you, you can make a screenshot if you want now, okay? But if you go to these uh, links over here, this is from a paper, but this one, you will find these and many other um, projects, up to 26, okay? That ESA is sponsoring right now to tackle this problem. So, for example, if you use um, multispectral imagery, okay, this is covering the bands uh, from the MSI from Sentinel-2, you see that each different material that is on the sea has a different signature, okay? So the plastic targets, which is the black one, you see that the, okay, the reflectance goes down, 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 and then it picks up in the, uh, 800 and uh, 400, 840 uh, nanometers, okay, and then it goes down again. You could say, okay, this one as well, okay, for rafted logs or timber, okay, look, but it's not this peak that we are looking, we are looking to the ensemble, okay, so the overall response, that's why it, it's called a signature, because it's different for each material, and this is uh, what uh, people are trying to use now uh, to detect the presence of plastic and differentiate from other species that may be floating on the water. Okay, in the Plymouth Marine Laboratory, okay, uh, they are developing drones, okay, also equipped with uh, uh, cameras, multispectral cameras, okay, to do these in situ measurements more in uh, close to the coast, okay. So this is another possibility what people are doing. Of course, I, I didn't mention, but here you will have a given spatial resolution, okay? On the order of tenths of meters. So that limits also your capability to detect plastics unless they are really covering a significant fraction of the pixel, okay? If you are flying low, your pixel size will be smaller and you will be able to detect uh, plastics of a smaller size. Another project that includes hyperspectral satellite data and also crowdsourcing. You know crowdsourcing. So it's the when you get information that is provided by the people, maybe through an app, and they report that there is a presence of a plastic uh, patch or uh, other types of uh, pollution. You can maybe have your app and you click the bottom, okay, and then the GPS information of where you are. Okay, is attached okay to a message that uh, it's go it's uh, transferred to the center and says, look, there is garbage over here. In some other cases, you can even take the picture, and this picture is sent to the center in order to assess the magnitude of the of the plastic uh, litter. Okay, 
Another example, now using thermal infrared, basically this is how a plastic bottle looks like in the visible part of the spectrum and how it looks like in the long wave uh, infrared. So the response is totally different. In this case, it's almost transparent, so it's very difficult to see, but the response, the transmissivity of the plastic, okay, in this part of the spectrum, it's very different, okay? So that can provide you some hints. So as you can see, maybe by combining different techniques, you can get the best of all. And another set of techniques, it's using the damping of the waves. Wherever you have a vortex, so the plastics tend to concentrate over there, the surface roughness is less, but also because of the plastics, the viscosity increases, but also because there are uh, what is called biofueling, there are um, microorganisms okay, decomposing these plastics, okay, they create surfactants, okay, in the water. These surfactants even alter the, 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 the viscosity even more of the surface and damp the waves. So if you have a synthetic aperture radar, like here, okay, and you have a region that is flatter, there are less waves, okay, then the radar waves get scattered more specularly in the forward direction, less is returned and they appear as black. So they, people that are studying this problem have already realized that wherever there are plastics, they also see these same signatures as when they have uh, oil spills or other things that dump the waves, okay? Actually, I put here other techniques sensitive to sea surface roughness can also be applied, provided the spatial resolution is enough. For example, I didn't list it because there are already too many slides, but GNSSR is another of the techniques that is used. GNSSR, it's like a B-static radar, but using the signals from navigation satellites as signals of opportunity. So when the surface of the water is flatter, the reflection becomes more specular, and instead of a black spot, you get something that is brighter. Okay, you get more power, more power from where the surface is flatter. Or you can also use LiDAR if you want or can, even though the reflectivity on the water is very, very low. But when you have something on the top of the surface, the reflectivity increases. Okay, and you can also use, okay, models, numerical models that predict, okay, the currents near the coast or in the middle of the ocean, okay, depending on the, on, the, on the model. So it will be up to you, the type of problem that you want to tackle, a more regional one or a more uh, global one, okay? Because this will tell you where these plastics are going to get concentrated, okay? Where these hotspots of marine litter are going to be, okay? And you can do that as well uh, using um, machine learning methods or artificial intelligence, okay? Trying to do that at global level. So I put one example of regional uh, level. Actually, this is from UPC and it's one of the teams. It's, not, it's in the School of uh, Civil Engineering, okay? So it's, uh, that's Barcelona. So this is the coast of uh, surrounding Barcelona. And this is another example at uh, global scale. And uh, this is it. Yeah, I wanted just to, to explain you uh, that this is not an impossible problem, okay? That people have many ideas, but when you open a call for ideas, uh, new ideas pop up, okay? And we are looking for imaginative, although with a, a, a bit of feasibility, okay? For this uh, GRSS and Van Allen Foundation uh, challenge. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to, to answer them. Thank you so much. Any questions? Feel free to either put it in the chat or you can also raise your hand. 
on the reactions at the bottom, I think. Yes. And then you can click on raise your hand. Ah. Adriano, can you see the chat? Yes. I'm good. Really okay. Here. That's a very good question. Okay. Because I mean, um, as you can imagine, many of the methods, uh, uh, even microwaves do not penetrate on the on the water. Uh, same thing happens with the uh, with well, not not completely, eh? because optical radiation can penetrate a bit. Okay, so I mean the the problem is uh, uh, it's it's very challenging for uh, submerged water. Okay, and there is no solution. So it's up to you to propose solutions. I know that some people are trying to characterize the same curves of um, reflectivity, but uh, at different depths. Okay, and also are a letting the, the plastic age, okay, get old, so they get uh, more uh, uh, biofueling and more um, how do you say it called um, more surfactants eh, to to appear and see how how it changes. Uh, what are the requirements for the formation of the chapter? Uh, well, this is in one of the slides. Let me share again. Let me do it. So it is explained here in, can you see my screen? I guess yes, so. We, yes, we could see it. Okay. So this is, uh, this is how to form a, a chapter, okay? For the student is the same, you need to have uh, 12 uh, GRS members, okay? And uh, well, uh, in the case of no, students- Adriano, you are sharing only the PowerPoint. You are not sharing the, the, ah, the browser. Yeah. Thank you. Because Thank you. you are sharing the, 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 the window, you. not the, yeah. Now? Okay, now, okay, okay now. No, now. Let, me, let me do it again. Can you see it now? Sorry, can you see the web page? Start a chapter. Yes. Yes. Well. Okay. So here you have the the instructions. Okay, and um, this is uh, from GRS site, and then you have the other link. Okay, um, to create chapters. Okay, so the information is in here. If you have any particular question, uh, please let us know. Um, Sometimes, I mean, in the student branches chapters, uh, sometimes if you cannot uh, meet the, the minimum requirement, okay, of 12, uh, you can combine with other societies. This is also a possibility because sometimes it's, uh, it's not that easy to find uh, 12 uh, members. But uh, I mean, since this is also quite uh, transversal in the sense, I mean, I could imagine, uh, uh, people from the Ocean Engineering Society, uh, depending on the type of sensor that you are going to use or the data that you are going to use from uh, signal processing, or if you need to put an antenna from antennas and propagation, etc. So making a, a, a combined chapter, that could also be a possibility if uh, it is impossible for you to reach this uh, minimum critical mass of uh, 12 people. So let me check. Uh, da, da, da. This apologies. I could follow more the sound rather than the slides. Well, uh, Christina, I uh, the slides will be available afterwards. And actually, um, Mariko Borging uh, has uh, recorded the presentation, so it, you can uh, take a look at it afterwards. Ah, uh, sorry, Tian Ling, six members to form a student chapter. Thank you. So it's easier. There was also a question before that. Um, the question is, is there, any uh, is there any open data available? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, well, to me, it's easier. Uh, well, from sure, from NASA, there are. But uh, if you go, let me check. Um, Sentinel Hub. Let me check one thing. Yeah. 
Uh, let me share again my screen. Uh, compartir pantalla. Okay. So if you go to this website, this is one of the few that have uh, data, okay, from the Copernicus satellites and other contributing missions, eh? not just uh, where you can download this uh, this data. Okay, I have not logged in for a while, but actually you can go. Forget about the pricing because you can get a one month uh, free license, and then afterwards it's it's actually not that expensive eh? because I think it was like three hundred euros one year or something like that, and then. Uh, it's an open bar, eh? you can get uh, as much as you want, but you can select the, the region, you can select uh, the type of sensors, the level of processing. I mean, there are many, many, many things. Let me see. So, so I'm just doing it in real time, eh? I have not prepared this, so. I hope it will work. Uh, it will not take too long. Okay, but actually you can go and navigate, etc. So you see, of course it goes wrong because Rome is where Esrin is. Okay, but we can go anywhere else. Okay, and do, you can get Sentinel-2, Sentinel-1, well, the different Sentinel. You can also get some Landsat uh, data. Uh, MVSAT, even though MVSAT is dead, okay, you can go to, to the archive and you can also study, for example, an event uh, of, uh, I don't know, maybe a flooding and the river basically brought into the ocean lots of uh, plastic um, uh, waste, okay, maybe you want to study this event or, or other events uh, back to the past, so you don't have to do that uh, with data that is happening in real time. Uh, and you see there are just a few. You can filter by dates and you can filter by region. I don't know, let me... Uh, I just click this, let, I, I mean, I'm doing, this is today. Okay, so you see, for example, these are Sentinel-1, the different polarizations, etc. Okay, I just pick one randomly, eh? but you saw the tracks. I'm, I'm, I'm just, but I mean, this is this is not probably useful. But you can get, it. let me see. Or let me go back. Let me see well, maybe one thing. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it is taking too long or not, I don't know. Well, in any case, the data is there, okay? And, and you can get it. I have uh, used it in the past, even for journal publications, when I needed to, to spot in a particular area and the reviewer asked me, and what happened with this? Okay, I went to the radar image and look what was happening there, etc. But the data is there. Um, and probably David or, or you, Mariko, you can, uh, you know better these uh, other links for NASA, data from NASA satellites. Maybe we can in the website put uh, some links to this and that will help. Yeah, I think that yeah. would be useful. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we, can we'll do that. We, we will look look at doing that. Do you have any more questions? And this is not the, the, the almost 50 people that have registered for the for the webinar. Okay, you're welcome. So wrap. Uh, but uh, the message is that uh, please spread the word as much as you can. Okay, because uh, GRSS is keen. Okay, to to support uh, student activities because we do believe strongly. Okay, that you are the future of the society and our profession in general. 
Yes, thank you, Adriano, for preparing these detailed slides. This is, I think, uh, I hope will be very useful in anybody that is considering proposing for this uh, for this activity. And as just to reinforce some of the things that have been stated earlier, is that um, we've we've really seen a lot of great activity from the the student grand challenges, and we hope that uh, this this third one will be as successful as the first two have been so far. So. Uh, thank you very much for attending, and we hope to hear from everyone soon. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you Bye. so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Bye.